Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm now in London, as you can actually, you probably can't actually tell. Yeah, I'm back in London. I was just out in Bali for two months, which you probably did know, and then went to LA for 10 days with Ima, my boyfriend. He had like a mastermind out there. I spoke on one of the days, so I just went for like half work, half just relax and chill the fuck out because the course just completely drained me. Um, I need to just like completely relax and not do work for a little bit, chill. And then, yeah, back in London finally. Um, the weather's not too great, which is kind of shit, but I'm actually quite happy to be back. It's good to have some routine. Um, I'm looking for a new place in London right now, so I've been doing a bunch of viewings and dragging email around with me. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's not the point of the video. This video is gonna be what I learned making six figures. So my three main things I learned making six figures. Um, the first one is gonna be, actually to be honest, like before these, I'm just gonna tell you before, I actually felt these things, I was just in denial about making like, actually doing it I guess, which I still feel a little bit now. I don't know if anybody else has felt that out there when sort of you have a really big goal and you don't really believe you can do it or like you have doubts, you're like, oh, like it sounds really nice. It sounds like a nice story like to tell, like making money. And then you actually do it and you're like, huh, nah, like that's, that's not real. Um, so I had like these goals for myself and the goal for myself that I had was before going out to Bali. So Iman always wanted to go to Bali. It was like a thing that he wanted to do. And before we even met, I think he was like sort of knew that he'd go to Bali the year afterwards. And then when we were together, he was like, yeah, I'm gonna go to Bali. And then that was kind of like, I was like, shit, I don't really have the money to go. So I need to fix something in my life so that I can then go away for two months out of the country, which would require me not having a job and working for myself or having a job that paid me a decent amount and would give me two months break without firing me, which probably wasn't, wasn't possible. Um, so I started my agency and in the back of my head, it was like a year before Bali. So like a year and a little bit ago, um, we were basically like, Bali was like the horizon kind of thing and I was like, okay, I want to do this to be able to go to Bali um, and Iman was like, well, okay, so what do you want to like make before you go? Because obviously like setting your yearly goals and stuff, I don't really know much about that, like I kind of, obviously I know about it, but I never really used to set it in concrete and they weren't really big numbers, like t to me, like £40,000 a year was a lot um, when I was a kid, I knew that like people that made £70,000, I used to want to be a vet and I was like, average vet salary, I think it, I read somewhere when I was like a kid, it was like £70,000 when you've been a vet for like quite a while, your, your salary went up and then per year you make like £70,000, I was like, oh that's so cool, like that's, those vets must be so rich and just balling, so like that was like a lot of money to me, it still is like a lot of money I guess, but um, when you get into the marketing sphere, um, like m money that's a lot of money is like more in millions. <laughs> so it was kind of a bit bizarre to me to think about like really big figures and how I would hit them, especially when you're starting from, from zero and you've not built anything yet. And it's like, okay, well, how am I gonna make 100K in a year if like I don't even know what my business is or like my business, ve like my monetary vehicle, like whatever. Um, it was kind of hard to know like to believe in myself. So the goal that I set for myself was I wanted to be making over $5,000 per month before going to Bali for at least like a month or two before. And I was like, okay, if I make over $5,000 a month, like I've made it, I am just rolling in it. Like I'm all good, sick lifestyle. Like I can have my own place. Um, and I was just like, that, that was like a lot for me. That was my goal. And up to Bali, Honestly, I left it to the last two months. I was on like 1,500 per month. Like it was like 1,500 per month. And then I started taking on um, consulting clients. So it'd be like one-on-one -on -one mentorship programs. I started, when I first started, I did my first one, it was like 500 pounds, four hours. Um, and then obviously it's gone up now. But like at the time, like I sort of fluctuated between 1.5, 500, 500 of that was outsourced to the videographer who was creating the content and then all I was doing was writing all the captions for Instagram, scheduling it, posting it and doing like a little bit of growth on the client account. So I was fluctuating between like 1.5K, sometimes like two, 2.5, like one month. And that was kind of it. And then it hit 
October time. Um, and in October, I went from like the 1.5 up to making around 7,000 pounds in the month. Um, 7,000 pounds in the month and I was like, it didn't feel real at the time because it was in the space of like, I think it was like 10 days, I made like five or six K. I think, no, maybe like four or five K. I know like a bulk of it was in like 10 days. And it's just because I was doing like, I was posting on my Instagram story a lot. I was doing a lot of organic. I was starting more to do LinkedIn lead generation stuff. And I'm just kind of like out there way more. Like I was actually being active and doing what I was supposed to be doing. And it was working, like surprise. Um, so I was doing that work went like up and I was like holy shit like a good body like I was so excited um so that was like the one thing <laughs> this has ended up being like a really long story but all in all what I'm trying to say is like the, one of the things I did learn is that by hitting six figures it was a lot easier than I thought it would be and it seems super far and like super distant and like extremely difficult to do when you're starting at ground zero when you've not really moved there yet when you can't really see the shape of how it's gonna how it's gonna plan out like the uncertainty makes it hard to, to believe so one thing that i learned is that it's actually a lot easier to do than i first primarily anticipated and then once actually hitting it i was like huh like all i need to do was do the work and i always get so annoyed at myself because like speak to yourself in the third person like natasha every single time you set a goal for yourself, you make it so hard for yourself and then you stress out and you put yourself under loads of pressure and you, you basically don't do anything until the very last moment that you could possibly do the work and then you like stress and then you do it all at the last moment and somehow like pull it off. And I was annoyed because I was telling Iman the whole time, like throughout the like, it was probably like six months leading up to Bali, he was like, you know, you need to get your shit together because we're, we're going to Bali soon and you've not booked your flight. like." the apartment the villa was like quite expensive um and like all these amounts added up and it was money that i hadn't even made in like the six months since starting entrepreneurship so to me it was getting kind of scary and i was like okay i don't actually have the money to go five thousand dollars isn't even enough so it was good that i had that one month which sort of spiked me up and then after the 7k i think i had to like 10k but yeah so that was sort of like, it was sort of like weird and kind of like euphoric when I started hitting the numbers and I could actually like pay for the villa and pay for flights and actually make it happen and it was me doing it. And it didn't feel real, so yeah, I guess one thing I learned is that it's actually a lot easier and then looking back on it, I wish I'd had that self-belief and I wish I could actually just do the work sooner instead of dramatizing it in my head and pretending that it was so difficult and impossible and it wasn't working for me and I was putting in all this time and like blah, blah, blah. And it's like I literally did a few little things and I just did them consistently and from that I just got the results I wanted within 10 days. So that was like, that was the first thing I learned. Moving on to the second thing, so this is the thing that kind of annoyed me and it's just life, it's just taxes. Like taxes, I just forgot about taxes for a while and in my head any money I made was mine and I was like I've worked for this money, like if I make £8,000 I have £8,000 it's mine. Not, not true. <laughs> Not true. And you'll, you'll learn this, or you probably already know it, and I probably don't even know, I'm probably gonna explain this in the wrong way. So if you're coming here for like tax advice, I don't know why you would be, leave, because <laughs> I don't really know much about taxes, but I know that they kind of fuck you over. And the money that you make, they basically just take half of it away above a certain point. And I think the tax bracket that I was hitting, they probably took, like, it was like around 30%. Um, and then now I think I'm getting taxed. I don't even, see, I don't even know. Um, but I think I'm getting taxed more around like 40% mark, maybe, I think. Um, anyone's gonna kill me if he sees this because he always like, he, he's spoken to me about taxes so much and I still just don't really understand what's happening. Um, but yeah, so taxes. I was getting really excited because I was like, ooh, yeah, like I'm making money, like it's sick. And then Iman, <laughs> Iman was like, well, you know, taxes like you, you can't spend all the money or like have 8k and it's actually like 8k um if it's sort of personal expenses so if it's personal it means that you basically have to make basically double for this example so if i made 8k for me to be able to actually spend 8k on something i need to make 16k because half of that money is going to be for taxes if it's 30 percent, obviously you give 30 percent away you have to make more money to be able to have that true amount that you started with if that made sense um but basically in my head I was like, okay, so everything I make I basically actually keep half of it and the other half I have to save to then send back to the government 
as like taxes. Um, but so, so taxes kind of annoyed me because I was like, I basically like for all of my goals, like if I make 5k, it's basically like at that probably like around 4k, 3 4k that I'm keeping. Now, like, I know I basically have to make double to be able to spend what I make, which is annoying. And it's just life, I'm just like ranting about it. But the one good thing that I learned about is business expense. If you can run, <laughs> if you can run something through the business, like through the company, um, if you run it through the company, then you can claim VAT back, which is 20%, and you get like the true amount. So if it's through the company and it's 10K, it's just 10K, it's not like you need to make 20 to spend it. And I'm gonna stop talking about taxes now because if I've not already said something that's incorrect, I'm probably about to. So I'm gonna leave it at that, but basically point number two is that taxes fuck with you and that annoyed me, but that's just life. And then at one point I was like, why do I even have a business? Like, I'm just gonna go be an employee again. Like, what? Number three, I can't actually remember what I noted down for number three. Oh yeah, number three. So number three, when I hit six figures, I was like, now I want to hit seven. And obviously, by six figures, I mean making six figure amount, as in if I made a certain amount per month, then I'd make 100K in the year. I don't think I've made, probably from when I first started, near 100. Yes, yeah, so when I hit that amount per month, I was like, oh, I want to make more and I want to make a million instead. So my annual goal went from, I think it was 100K I wrote down a year ago. I said I wanted to make 100,000 pounds in a year. Um, and then from now, like this year, instead of having 100K as a target, I want to make like, I said I wanted to make 300K and now I kind of want to make 500K. So I'm kind of just going up. And then when you break down the numbers, it doesn't seem that hard to make, for example, like a million. Um, <coughs> sorry. Um, it doesn't seem that hard to actually make a million. So it's weird because I think once you start actually making money and you've you've made like, I mean, for yourself, obviously money is like the, a large amount of money is going to be different for everybody that looks at it. But for me, I'm making a lot for what I thought I could do. Um, and now that barrier is sort of changing. So what I thought used to be a lot is actually little and I'm like well if I actually put in the work and do it the right way then I can actually just double triple quadruple that um so that's kind of like the third thing that I learned is that when you actually hit a goal obviously it's going to motivate you to do more um but I thought I'd be happy sort of hitting a certain level and being like I'm going to just chill here now like I've made it for me this is the amount that I need to live a comfortable lifestyle still not there yet like I'd want to make more and probably be at like maybe 40k a month and then stay there, but I just know that's not gonna happen. And then as you go up, I'm gonna just wanna do more and then push the barriers and see how much more I can make. So I get kind of competitive with myself. But that was like the third thing that I learned, um, I think from, from making like the six figure mark. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you again in the next one.